do absolutely nothing. Leave the ordinary behind with a stay at Power Scourge Hotel and Spa. Somewhere to do simply nothing or a little bit of everything. Find your perfect break at powerscourgehotel.com. At Pat McDonald Paints, we want you to achieve more, so we offer more. Free expert advice on all our products, finishes and colours. We care more, so we offer free delivery to your door. And at Pat McDonald Paints, we have more. Like €10 Euro of 2.5 litre Dulux vinyl mat, soft sheen and easy care colours, and €20 Euro of 5 litres. Our price promise also means you don't pay more. If you want to achieve more, talk to our experts in store. With Pat McDonald Paints. Mattresses delivered. We'll deliver your mattress immediately to any part of Ireland, free. Quality and best prices guaranteed. That's mattresses-delivered.ie. Don't forget the hyphen. T's and C's apply. This is an emergency appeal from Concern Worldwide. Cyclone Edai is threatening the lives of nearly 1.7 million people in Malawi and Mozambique. Heavy rains and floods have washed away homes and displaced thousands. Please help Concern provide immediate shelter and life-saving essentials. Call 1850 410510 or visit concern.net net today to give what you can. Thank you. Wednesday Night Rugby on Off The Ball with Vodafone official sponsors of the Irish rugby team. Team of us everyone in. Now Keith Wood you're with us hello. Good evening Joseph how Good are you? Evening. We've just watched Shane Larry have a hole in one at the Masters Par 3 competition we've also just had Andrew Cotter of the BBC on talking about the Masters and as I welcomed you to the show, I suddenly realised, uh, hating you in the moment of rea- realisation, that you have played Augusta National. Yes, I have. Um, yeah. And I'm very good friends with Andrew Cotter. Ah, well, listen, so, you the... know, everyone, chummy, chummy. That's the, the only, the only, I'm not in the uh, inside, you know. Uh, he he uh, disappears over in Killaloo from time to time oh, just to get away from it all, from all the, the madness of the BBC. But um, he's got a great voice, great voice oh. for telly, for radio, and is the most cynical and sarcastic man of all time. So I have to say, love him. <laughs> well, I asked him, you know, if even the grizzled pro that he is, he um, looked at Augusta and the Azaleas and thought, God, this place is amazing. And he did say, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit extraordinary there. I mean, it is, it's, um, I mean, the town outside the ground isn't fantastic. No. Uh, and the second you go up um, Magnolia Drive, um, every single thing is perfect. Mm. Everything. Mm. It's quite amazing. Is it almost too artificial? Uh, no. It's fantastic. <laughs> I like it. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, what takes everybody says that has been there, that have have watched it or have played there, will say that it's it's amazingly hilly. It's a very tiring yeah. course to go around. Um, um, I played off the members' tees and I've played off the masters' tees, and it's incredibly intimidating off the masters' tees. You're you're hitting down a tunnel of trees, mm. um, and I wouldn't be the straightest of hitters, so that makes it kind of tough. But it's it's an amazing place. I mean, it was a great it was a great opportunity. I was invited to play um, about ten years ago now, and um, it was truly truly phenomenal. It was about six or eight weeks before the Masters, um, so they hadn't. Um, they were only beginning to put up some of the hoardings around it and some of the uh, the grandstands, so yeah. you could see it as it was, which was it's magnificent, actually. Really, really magnificent. A beautiful, beautiful place. Yeah, no doubt. I'm sure it's amazing. I um, must try and get over there. I guess it's on a lot of people's to-do list. Uh, meanwhile, the rugby at hand, it's another Pro 14 week as we build up towards Easter weekend and the semi-finals in the Heineken Champions Cup. Friday, we have Edinburgh hosting Ulster, and Munster are away to Treviso. On Saturday, Leinster, who really just are fulfilling fixtures at this stage and they're home and hosed in terms of Pro 14 uh, qualification. They're at home to Glasgow at the RDS at 3 o'clock and then also at 3 o'clock at the sports ground, Connacht have a pretty crucial game against Cardiff which will uh, decide much. So that's the important game of the weekend, Connacht uh, against Cardiff at the sports ground. It is. I think it's been almost unusual that... Um, a lot of the business has already been done with a couple of matches to go um, in the tournament, uh, maybe a few more from Leinster's perspective. So we know that um, Ulster, Munster and Leinster are fine. Munster obviously, or Leinster obviously in pole position, mm. but it's a cracking game for this weekend against Cardiff. And um, if they can win this weekend, they have a match to spare. 
um, against Munster and Tottenham Park next week. So it's a really, really big one. If they win this weekend, that's qualification for mm-hmm. Europe for them, which would be phenomenal for Connacht. And if we, uh, you know, when we saw that there was a shake-up in the Pro 14, the shake-up in the European competition, um, we would have always wished to try and get all our four teams into it. But in many respects, you're kind of wishing against reality. Yeah. But one big, one big game this weekend and that reality could become um, uh, absolutely true. And it's their priority. They rested a number of players against Sale in the Challenge Cup. I'm sure they didn't want to, but they made that decision. The likes of Tom Farrell was on the bench, Ulton Delan left out. Uh, they have targeted this game and this competition. Cardiff beat them in January 8 points to 7. You'd be inclined, though, at the sports ground and given the stakes to give Connacht a massive chance here. Uh, I would say even, even on the back of the game... Um, last week, um, you know, a six-five win, mm. which was uh, amazing. They've had a couple of low, low game or low scores, um, but that isn't Connacht's form. And at home, with the wish that the weather might be some way decent, um, and I love the fact that Connacht have actually built on a level of confidence. And when Andy Friend came in, there was a there was a fair amount of criticism for the fact that. Um, his predecessor was kind of shot out the door in um, uh, in very snappy fashion. Mm. And yes, Andy Friend seems to be the guy that fits the bill exactly for Connacht. They've yeah. looked confident. They've looked, um, they look like they've, they're they having an enjoyment, a high sense of enjoyment, even with certain things not going their way. They've had a lot of players in the Irish setup this year. Um, and that takes its toll, actually. Mm. And yet they look in good form. I think Bundy's back at the weekend. I, I don't think Quinn Rue is. I think he's... He's out with a bug. Yeah. Um, but uh, Bundy be back, he'd make a big difference. And I thought Cardiff were uh, capable of doing great things. They reminded me, actually, of prior to the European Cup, it's a long time ago, when you'd see the uh, Welsh teams play and they could do amazing things they, with the ball in hand and defensively weren't up to scratch. And Cardiff last week weren't up to scratch defensively. But they could score and they could trouble you. So you want to make certain you knock them down early. But um, no, I have to say it has to be Connacht's game at home. Johan van Graan has signed a contract extension with Munster. He'll be around until June 2022. He's still relatively early, really, when you consider he only took over halfway through last season into his tenure. I think it seemed like straightforward business. On both sides, he was keen to stay, and Munster obviously have offered him the extension earlier than they might have needed to. What stamp has he put in the team? Um, I think he's put a he stabilised the team an awful lot. I've seen a couple of his presentations actually to his vision for what he wants in the future, and I have to say, um, uh, it takes a period of time for those things to happen, but it's exciting, and um, he is trying to build his team around him. He's trying to bolster the squad that he has. I think everybody can see that from from the outside. Um, what I, 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 at, at times we get frustrated watching Munster for the fact that maybe sometimes they're not as um, expansive and that's not hugely expansive but that it reverts sometimes to one out rugby yeah. I think that takes a period of time to change um, I don't think we'll ever see Munster really playing in the manner in which Connacht do I just think there's a different DNA there and, mm. um, uh, and I kind of like the DNA but I don't like it when it gets a bit slow for that one-out rugby. That's the only thing I don't like. Well, I but what the, Van Gran has brought... Yeah, go on. Yeah, what I think he's brought is he's he's brought a, a sense of confidence to the players that are not necessarily on the top tier. So I think he's built the depth through it. Um, I think the team look uh, fresher this year, a lot, by the way. Um, I, I, I thought in... Um, in the last semi-final that they had against Saracens, I thought the players were out in their feet by the time they got there. Yeah. Now, some of our senior players, I think, are out in their feet a little, and I, I think they'll all have a rest this weekend. Mm. But on the same token, I, I actually think he's chopped and changed the players an awful lot more. Um, he has blooded a huge number of players in the squad. He's given them more higher octane match um, opportunities. And ultimately, I think we'll be fresher at the end of the of the season than we have been in the past. And I think that is a significant move. Mm. On the DNA point, uh, for me, and I think for a lot of people, Munster were at their very best in 2008 when they still had all the traditional values that are synonymous with Munster. But equally, you look at that back line and they could and routinely did go from their own 22 
over the try line and it was uh, sublime rugby to watch, flowing rugby. They were, ju- they were just a brilliant team. That's really the perfect blend, isn't it? That, that must be where Munster ultimately are aiming to get back to long-term, medium-term. Well, I think it's, it's um, a miscomprehension in some respects to think that Munster don't play an attractive style of rugby. They're, they're, their historical blend was a mixture between forwards and backs. Yeah. And that's when they're at their best. That's when they're at their most potent. Mm. Um, the game has changed significantly since 2008. And I think Munster were very fortunate, 2006, 2008, that their world-class players all happened to be Munstermen. You know, and Munster need to get back to that. And that is, without a shadow of a, of a doubt, uh, part of the drive of what Munster are looking to do. But that can't happen overnight, and that'll happen over a period of time, which is why I'm very happy that Van Gran is staying there, right. because you need consistency in your in your coach. And there's been a lot of change, for obviously, for terribly sad reasons, and then for with Razi Erasmus going back, back to South Africa. Suddenly you have um, three coaches in a couple of years, you need stability, and the teams that do very well have stability at the top of the helm. And um, look, I I expect them to change and make bigger progressions in the next year or two. I think this year in particular is incredibly difficult to make huge change because of the World Cup at the end of it and the manner in which Ireland mm. protects its players. Mm. Rightly, by the way, rightly. Yeah. But it still makes it very, very difficult for, for the club team. So when I look at it in our four pr- provinces are all... You know, hopefully with Connacht, I would really hope that they win at the weekend. Um, that there, we could have four teams in the European Cup in next year. That'd be fantastic. With Ireland going very well, I think that's very, very good. But I'd be looking for stability this year and progression, a lot of progression from next year. Uh, one last point I wanted to get your thoughts on, if we're talking about the game changing. Uh, the jackal is a fairly modern phenomenon. I think um, I can remember yeah. hearing the phrase for the first time. So it seems World Rugby are trialling a number of rules. There's the 50-22 rule. We can talk about that again at another stage. But yeah. there is talk now increasingly of them removing the jackal, the poacher that we see, the David Pocock who's uh, defending and leaning over the ball and often being smashed by the attacking team to try and get him out of the way. It seems there's going to be trials. We're not sure where, but trials to see if yeah. rugby can go back to traditional rooking. Uh, the reasoning being twofold. One, there'll be more men in the rook and therefore more space. Uh, but two, I think primarily uh, safety, because we're seeing a huge number of injuries in this area of the pitch. I've seen uh, proponents on both sides. Where are you on this? Do you like the jackal? Do you want to, is it a good part of the game? Um, I think when you see somebody do it perfectly, um, it is, it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, and yet I hate it, actually. <laughs> right. I, I don't, I don't like it. I'm not a fan. Um, it is a new part of the game. In times past, the second there was a ruck, you couldn't put your hands in it. Um, it's the difficulty in refing it is the issue. It's actually become incredibly complex. And if you're a fan watching at home and you say, um, well, he's got his hands on the ball and he's, he is on his feet, surely, uh, it has to be a penalty, and he's won a penalty. It often is not because he may be the wrong guy in. It's only one guy is allowed to go in. Mm. You'll always see two or three, and then you see this huge flurry of players throwing themselves into it to try and clear out the rook. Um, I think it's a vulnerable position in the game, and I don't like it. Uh, the change will be very difficult because it's become part and parcel of the game. Mm. And it is in that one grey area when when is a rook not a rook? And who is the first person in? Are you the first person in or are you not the first person in? And I have to say, with the speed of which the game is going, it's putting almost an undue pressure on the referee to make a snap decision of what thing is right or not. So some of the things that are cleared out are absolute penalties. And when you see players getting injured by things that are penalties, you do tend to get a bit angry looking at that. Mm. You know. So look, for all these changes, these are changes that happened years previously. And we've discussed this in the past. It's the law of unintended consequences. So you, you wanted to change it. They didn't want to put bodies or, or feet on bodies, the old traditional rocking way, um, where I think everybody knew what happened. And yes, bad things happened too, but um, you kind of knew that there were no hands ever allowed near the ball and mm. you could rock over the ball and more people were in. That looks unpalatable. And yes, there are some injuries from it, but tend to be very few and quite minor for the most part. But... Um, 
it then got to this idea that actually you had a window, you had a period of time when you could put your hands on the yeah. ball. And some of the players are magnificent at it and really are. And Ty Byrne being one, Pocock being one. Um, but I think you put yourself in a vulnerable position, showing the nape of your neck to the opposition to kind of clash into is not something I think that was part and parcel of what rugby was supposed to be. Yeah. But I think it's one of those elements that knocks on to something else. So I think they will make a change in time because there are too many injuries in that space. And I then, I then think there'll be another change because we don't quite know how people will will react to it. And the coaches are there full time looking to try and find uh, uh, you know, a little chink in somebody else's armour or a little chink in the laws of the game yeah. to give them an edge. So, um, look, I, I think it'll take a period of time, but I do think it'll go in time. OK, interesting. Let's come back to that some evening. We're pretty much out of time, short and sweet this evening. Enjoy the Masters. Uh, I intend to, actually. I'm going to watch a lot of that now. Good man. All right. Thanks, Emil. Cheers, Jens. Keith Wood there. Short break. Football show on the way. Wednesday Night Rugby on Off The Ball with Vodafone, official sponsors of the Irish rugby team. Team of us. Everyone in. Get up-to-the-minute news updates at Newstalk.com and on the Newstalk app. There's not a lot you can get for €30. Euro. Have your car valeted. Meet a friend for lunch. Or... Watch the match on a new big screen TV. With Harvey Norman's interest-free finance terms, you can take home what you really want today. From just €30 Euro a month, you could watch your movies with surround sound or get through twice the laundry with a new large capacity washing machine. Interest-free finance terms with Harvey Norman. What would you get? Go! Standard fees, terms and conditions apply subject to assessment. Finance provided by FlexiFi Europe Limited. For full terms and conditions, visit harveynorman.ie forward slash flexi dash fi. When you run your own business, sometimes a heavy workload can weigh you down. That white, please. But Virgin Media Business offer Voom products that seamlessly work on their own. Meaning you can focus on your product knowing we look after the rest. Virgin Media Business makes light work of everything. See virginmedia.ie forward slash business for details. Terms and conditions apply. Guaranteed Irish and family-owned Acme Blinds is Ireland's favourite window blind manufacturer. Experts in all types of motorised blinds for home, school or commercial premises. We carry Ireland's biggest range of plantation shutters. New children's ranges include Disney, Star Wars and Marvel superheroes. Best for choice, value and service. Contact us on Facebook or acmeblinds.com. The Audi Approved Plus used car sales event is now on. Discover your premium used Audi today with a 12-month warranty and exclusive 3.9% APR available only at your local authorised Audi dealer. It doesn't have to be new to be everything you've dreamed of. Finance is made under a higher purchase agreement and subject to lending criteria. Deposit required. Terms and conditions apply. Volkswagen Bank GmbH Branch Ireland is authorised by the Federal Financial Supervisory Authority in Germany and regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland for conduct of business rules. Visit audi.ie slash used cars. Visit Audi Centre Bracken Road Sandyford today to avail of our exclusive offers and test drive your future Audi. You often listen to your head. Ah, oh, this chest pain. I think it might be getting worse. 